Hello, everyone, and welcome to our last spring webinar session. Today, we're going to be looking at searching as strategic exploration. My colleague Kathy will be taking over for that. I just want to get the usual housekeeping out of the way. First, thank you for joining us today. This is our last session. Um, it is being recorded, and the recording will be posted to our YouTube uh, Probably this afternoon. If you are attending live, you will receive a certificate of attendance and all registrants will receive the recording. The recording will be public, so please feel free to share it with anyone you feel would benefit from it. Again, thank you today. We will have questions at the end, both recorded and unrecorded. Also feel free to put them in the chat. I will be going off video, but I will be monitoring them. It's your turn now, take it away. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the uh, last frame in the ACRL framework for information literacy, um, the searching for a strategic exploration frame. Um, it's a last frame in the framework and our webinar series, but it's not the least. Um, remember, because the frames are so interconnected, um, they are listed and we've talked about them in this series in alphabetical order, not in order of importance or as a learning sequence. Okay. So here's the language of the frame. Um, searching for information is often nonlinear and iterative, requiring the evaluation of a range of information sources and the mental flexibility to pursue alternate avenues as new understanding develops. So we've said again and again throughout this webinar series that many of the frames within the framework overlap conceptually, and this is definitely no exception. Um, one frame in particular it shares commonalities with is research as inquiry, which we talked about in our March 11th session in which talks about the process of research as non-linear and iterative. Uh, searching a strategic exploration is very similar in its conceptualization of the work as non-linear and iterative, but as the frame's name suggests, it focuses on the searching aspect of research specifically, rather than research writ large. The searching a strategic exploration frame asks us to reflect on what searching is um, and what we're doing when we search for information. So when we search, we're both looking for information that is relevant and meets our needs, as well as figuring out how to access and navigate those sources. And the frame describes information searching as, quote, a contextualized complex experience that affects and is affected by the cognitive, affective, and social dimensions of the searcher. So that is how, why, and where we search reflects our end goals, our audience, our current skill set, and our scope of access to information sources. So here's three main takeaways from this frame. First is that searching requires a baseline awareness of information resources and search strategies. So as researchers, we need to understand the range, types, and formats of information available to us and become familiar with how information sources uh, are organized and how they present information so that we can successfully navigate them and apply the appropriate search strategies in the right place at the right time. So good strategic exploration is grounded in this knowledge and skill. Then, searching requires continual adaptation and adjustment. Searching is necessarily iterative and exploratory. So searching is strategic exploration calls for researchers to, quote, understand that first attempts at searching do not always produce adequate results. So successful searching may require exploring a variety of information sources, from freely available materials to the subscription databases available at the library, and it might require us to use a range of different strategies, um, from keywords, subject headings to advanced search syntax. And the last top takeaway here is that searching involves evaluating information sources. So searching doesn't end when we find any piece of information. Um, so it's only really successful when we've landed on information and enough of that information um, that's relevant, suitable to the context we're working in and that best meets our needs. So if we're not there yet, we have to keep persisting, adapting and adjusting our searches until we get there. So as with the other frames in the ACRL framework, searching a strategic exploration covers both the skills and the attitudes that you need to successfully complete research. So that is both what we need to be able to do and how we need to be able to think about it. So let's start with what we need to be able to do. The first is to identify what information we need. So what do we need to come away with at the end of our exploration? That will depend on a host of different factors, including what questions are we trying to answer? Um, how much information do we need? How broad or deep does it have to be? Um, whose voices or expertise do we need to gather? Who's our audience? Who are we sharing the results of this search with? 
And then what type of format of information do we need and why? So the answers to these questions depend on the context you're working in. So how much do we already know? What are we being asked to do? Are we searching as part of a school assignment? Is it a personal need or something else? And if it's an assignment, um, what are the parameters of that assignment? So the length, the number of sources required, the types of sources required, and so on. So searching in which approaches to it are best can vary a lot depending on the task at hand. So searching for uh, a casual, low stakes question um, will be a lot different than searching to learn more about a medical condition, right? Also in the search process, as our knowledge grows, we might find that we end up wanting or needing something a little different from what we started out with. Um, this is another overlap with the research's uh, inquiry frame. So as that frame suggests, we may ask different or better questions as we learn more during the search process. Next, we need to know where we can and should look for the information we need. So based on what we need, what are the best places to look? There's a lot of information out there, and this might evolve during the research, research process. So we may start on Wikipedia to get background information on a topic, then move on to a general article database, then explore a subject-specific database. Um, in short, we want to look in the right places for our context and need. So we have to consider who or what is likely to create or have the information we're seeking, as well as the answers to the contextual questions that we just talked about. So for quick, simple questions, we might just need a fast Google search. We wouldn't need to use, say, Academic Search Premier or another library database. But for a complex, in-depth academic question, Google searches by themselves um, would not be appropriate. Uh, another factor here is what resources are available to us. Here at UDC, um, since we're affiliated with a university that pays for subscription databases, we have access to an enormous scope of information uh, on top of what's available elsewhere through um, public libraries, bookstores, the internet, et cetera. Uh, we need to know how to look for the information we need. So finding the right information across a wide spectrum of information sources requires a baseline understanding of how the information sources work and how to navigate them. So for new researchers, this might start with questions like, what is a database? Uh, what's in it? How is it organized? Uh, what search strategies can I carry over from the searching that I already do in my daily life? More experienced researchers might ask, um, within a specific database, does this resource have a thesaurus for subject headings that I can use? What syntax do you use for wildcards or truncation? So in searching, depending on our needs and level of expertise, we use a lot of different techniques from keywords, which can be very simple, but also really effective, to very advanced. Um, and I'll just mention here, um, we covered a lot of advanced search techniques in our advanced search techniques webinar in October. Um, that is listed on the UDC Library YouTube channel. And then lastly, selecting the best sources. As I mentioned just a minute ago, um, searching isn't just about finding any information. It's about finding the right information for a context in need. So in order to do that during the search process, we need to continually evaluate the material we're finding, assessing the extent to which what we've found so far achieves that goal. So through examining our searches and search results, we can identify and experiment with adjustments in each iteration of our searching that ideally gets us closer and closer to meeting our information needs. The skills and attitudes involved in this kind of evaluation are addressed in much more detail in the framework's authority is constructed and contextual frame, and we discussed that in our February 11th session. <clears throat> so that was what we need to be able to do. Here's how we need to be able to think. So first, we need to be prepared for a process that will require perseverance. As the frame says, quote, first attempts at searching do not always produce adequate results. So just as the research's inquiry frame does, searching a strategic exploration encourage us to consider research as a process of exploration rather than a clear cut or linear process. So something that can be messy at times with ups and downs. Persisting through these processes means that research makes emotional demands of us as researchers, uh, as well as intellectual demands. This is something that we try to talk about with students so that they anticipate that iteration in that exploration and consider it part of the learning process uh, for research rather than an indication of failure. We also have to understand that sources of information are really different. So sources of information have different content, different formats, and different value to us at any given time, depending on our needs and context. So if we're doing academic work that requires the use of scholarly peer-reviewed articles, then a newspaper database won't serve us well. 
scholarly article database would be the right fit. So in other words, we need to be looking in the right places for the right things. And the information world is really huge and really complex. So the frame also encourages us to seek guidance from experts where and when necessary. And that, of course, is what we in the library are here for, uh, to support students, faculty, and staff in building their knowledge uh, and their ability to research and navigate the world of information. And then the last one here is to know when you're done. Uh, do you have enough information to meet your current needs? So searching is strategic exploration explains how part of searching is knowing when you're done. And this might seem simple, but it can actually be really complicated. Sometimes the answer can connect to the parameters of an assignment or a project. So for instance, a paper that requires at least 10 sources will kind of guide you in that direction. Other times it will be a lot more nebulous. Uh, so if you're doing academic work or a literature review, um, you're starting to see the same references and ideas over and over again. You've realized you're at a saturation point. Maybe that's the time in which you're done. Let's talk a little bit about searching as strategic exploration in the classroom. So we can establish a foundation for searching and strategic exploration by first supporting students and growing that awareness of research resources and developing their search skills that we spoke about earlier. So the very first step here is to ensure that students are aware of the full scope of what's available to them. Academic library resources in particular are typically new to students. And so one of the most common pieces of feedback we get after we do orientations to the library is surprise about the extent of resources available to the UBC community through the library. So our electronic resources, the journals, the resources through WRLC. And that's one of the reasons that it's so important for us to reach students early on in their time at UDC. Um, we have a few ideas that we wanted to share uh, for the classroom or for student assignments that relate to the searching as strategic exploration frame. The first is a Koosh ball activity. Um, this is a really fun short activity um, that's a great example of searching and iteration. So in this activity, we start with a slide that has a big picture of a Koosh ball. And we ask students, how would you describe this object? Google search for it until you find what it's called. And you know, we will have students who know what it's called, um, who might have had one of these at some point. So we have to ask them um, you know, to, keep, to keep a little quiet, not say anything, don't, don't spoil it for anybody. Uh, once there's a critical mass who have students have found it, who have found it, uh, we debrief. And so we talk about what words did you use to search? How many searches did it take you to find the answer? And students will have used a variety of terms, which is a really great illustration of both using keywords as a search strategy and how there can be a lot of different ways to describe a concept. So students might have searched for string ball, plastic thread ball, or something like that. And typically, they also will have had to try several different searches. Then after we debrief, we take a look at the patent for the Koosh ball, which uses really technical language. They call it a generally spherical object with floppy filaments to promote shore capture. This is a really good demonstration of how the words we use to search in one context, for example, what we might use on Google, um, might be different from what we use in another, um, like a patent database or an academic database, because those information sources vary in their content and purpose. Another is a keyword search and brainstorm. And this is an activity we talked about in the researches inquiry webinar, but I'll briefly mention it here too, since it's also applicable to this frame. Um, and this activity asks students to identify keywords from the research question, then brainstorm synonyms, broader terms, narrower terms, and related phrases. And doing that structured brainstorm helps students think through how they're going to be searching, preparing for that strategic exploration with keywords and the really likely uh, chance that they'll have to iterate in their search. And then the last one I'll mention here is matching research needs to information sources. So two of the knowledge practices in the searching is strategic exploration frame are identify interested parties, such as scholars, organizations, governments, and industries who might produce information about a topic and then determine how to access that information. And then match information needs and search strategies to appropriate search tools. So in other words, who has the information you need? How might you access that information? And which resources are best for you to use? So I've worked with a class that had a really complex research project, a group project, and they were assigned to write a brief on a federal policy. So the project um, required them to provide the background and history of the policy, analyze the effectiveness and the strengths and weaknesses of the policy, uh, compare the policy to similar ones internationally, 
um, and to make evidence-based recommendations based on their research to improve the policy. So we divided this up over two class sessions. And the first one, we just brainstormed information resources that could help them answer the various questions that they had. So as a class, we brainstormed a long list of resources. So, you know, congressional research service reports, scholarly journals, personal testimonials, reports from advocacy organizations. And then I used the, class, the list generated by the class to come up with a resource sheet of potential sources for each content area of that research project. And then in our second class session, we talked about how to navigate and search some of those specific information sources that we've talked about and identified. Um, and it emphasized the ones that we that weren't as familiar to the students, like for government and legal documents. And the setup of this activity was really simple, um, but it was a good opportunity for the class to review the specific requirements, understand the information options that were available and relevant to them, and figure out how to navigate various resources, including those that they may not be as familiar with. So those are just a few activities we found useful. Um, there's a lot of other activities that we're really looking forward to trying and some of our favorite resources um, for new ideas is the ACRL Sandbox and Project Quora, um, which are collections of freely available tutorials and, and lesson plans that draw on the framework. So we're hoping to do some of those in the future. And now we can take some questions or have some discussion. Yeah, please feel free to either put your questions in the chat or go ahead and unmute yourself. We'd love to hear from you. I know it's a Friday at the okay. end of a long week. <laughs> please go ahead. <laughs> Hello. 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 Thank you. Thank you much for the presentation. I, I really don't have any questions, but I just want you to know that the uh, videos were very, very helpful and also being able to uh, make sure that the students were aware that they could always go and chat with the librarian. Oh, uh, some of them have not, um, you know, benefited from that. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to... Um, you know, thank you for the resources that are out there. It's it's very helpful because I have online students, so yeah, they need to be able to readily access uh, materials. Thank you. That's that's great, and that is you know the first step of of searching, right? Is to just know what's out there. Um, so that that is really important. So I'm, I'm glad that you're sharing that with your students. And you know, they um, I have a group of students now that are seniors ready to graduate, but of course, when they had their first course, um, they had um, the library 101 session. So mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. I think all the students need to start with that to get them grounded so that as they progress, it'll be easier. Absolutely. Uh, that's something that we're working on. <laughs> Well, you're competing with the uh, the causes presentation, so I'm, sure. I'm going to kind of move away. <laughs> All right. Thank you again for but joining us today. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. So oh, and and uh, Kathy, I want you to know that uh, what the students found so helpful was that crap. They are using that and okay. they are referencing it. So I, I think that's really great. Good. That's awesome to hear. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Thanks. We'll see you later. Okay. Right. Not seeing anything else coming in. So I want to thank everyone for attending today. I'm going to end the recording. Thank you.